Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Some of you may remember this. Uh, it is my Raspberry Pi 2 B Plus home security camera. You, like, you can actually see there that it's empty right now. I pulled the Raspberry Pi out of it, and this is just the shell for demonstration purposes. Because it was about time to give this uh, little project a refresh and make it better, and I would like to introduce you to better. Uh, so instead of using a Raspberry Pi 2, it is using a 0W. <clears throat> and uh, I think it looks pretty sleek. It's nice and small. Much smaller than uh, the original version. And you can see that I've also cut out the passive infrared sensor. Now if you're going to do a project like this on your own, the passive infrared sensor is a pretty good way to go. It makes things really easy. Just acts like a button on the uh, GPIO. But, in order to keep this camera nice and small, I decided to forego that and write some code that compares two images being stored in the 0W's RAM. And that's where it gets its motion information. So, this one is kind of slower to process if motion has happened. So there is kind of a chance that uh, it'll miss whatever made the motion. This one was very quick to react very very small script to make it go uh, something else that I've changed is this one used to run BitTorrent this one ran BitTorrent sync to update you know like my phone or a little my little BT sync node that I made out of a different Raspberry Pi Zero um, I've changed that because the Zero only has one core and it's a fairly small it's a very it's a fairly slow processor compared to the two or the three Instead, it is running a simple HTTP server which just lists all the created video files in the directory and you can download them. Uh, there are some security flaws in that. With this one, if someone destroyed the camera, you still had a backup of the files. With this one, no such luck. But the hope is that with its small size, it'll be harder to notice, even with this cool looking rib ribbon cable sticking out the back. Of course, you still have access to the SD card. You can kind of see the camera module in there. And instead of going with a 0.65 wide angle lens, I've gone with a 180 degree fisheye lens. So let's get into how I made this. All right, so we're gonna start off with looking at the physical aspects of its construction. This is a camera lens for cell phone cameras. It just screws into a clip-on base. Pick that up for ten dollars off Amazon, and then the lens itself just screws into the soft PLA plastic. And I'm using rubber bands right now to hold it together because it's still in testing phases, but it is reliable enough for me to want to show everybody, right? And then I've just got glue dots holding the the case together. You can see the camera module there, as well as the switch. And this switch is just read by the Python script to tell it if it can take pictures. This is not an on and off switch. It's just a is it okay to record switch. And you can see the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which gets surprisingly good. Oh, my switch just broke. Oh no. Okay, moving on. You can see where I've got the switch soldered into uh, GPIO, I believe 17, and a ground pin. And that's just, oh no, it's a 3.3 volt pin. And that's just so when the switch is on, then GPIO 17 is high and it can do its thing. Uh, you can see I have every port except for the power on blocked off. And then, you know, you just plug it in. Very simple construction. And I did originally plan on sharing these files with the world. But the unfortunate fact of the matter is, is that these aren't standardized parts, the switch nor the camera lens. Each set of these lenses that I've ever bought is slightly different sized, so you'd have to make changes to the files yourself anyway. And other than, well, nothing, this is just a very standard box setup. So if you already know some CAD, 
and you already are into 3D printing, this would be a very easy thing to set up. So, with the physical aspects described, um, let's move on to the code, you know, the heart of everything. All right, so in the interest of keeping this video short, I'm not gonna do an in-depth walkthrough of how the code works, but if you check the description down below, I will have a copy of all the scripts that I used in this project for you to download and tweak yourself. So without any further ado, let's hit this up. Here we have the actual Python script that runs the camera. And you can see here, I've got the Pi camera libraries imported as well as the GPIO imported and this is the GPIO setup. Real important to set it to a pull down resistor for whatever pin you're using. I happen to use 22 but you can use almost any of them. But make sure you pull it down otherwise you'll get uh, false positives on it. And you can see here you can set whatever resolution you want for the camera. If you want super high def well, not super high depth. If you want really high quality videos, then set this higher. If you want uh, smaller videos to save space, then set it to whatever you want. I have the sense width and sense height set to be a percentage, right now 10% of whatever I use. Uh, I've set this script up so that it's very customizable to anyone using it, but keep in mind that if you change the size of the sense width and sense height, to be really large, it could take a long time to run the motion test. So that's why I have it set to effectively 128 by 72, because that ends up being still 9,000 pixels for it to compare against. Now I have set it up so that once it hits the threshold, it cuts out and returns a true, but depending on where the motion is in the picture, it could take a while to get to that. So just if you're going to if you're gonna change these values, this is what I found to work for me. If you're gonna change the values, be sure to play around with them. Threshold and sensitivity are what it looks at. Threshold is how much each pixel needs to change on the channel being looked at. I have mine looking at the green channel, but threshold is the value that it needs to change by in order to, uh, in order to count as a changed pixel. Sensitivity is how much of the picture needs to change. Right now I have it set to 5%. These values have worked out really well for me. Now I believe each pixel can carry up to 256 for its value. So anything between zero and 255. And so 20 isn't much of a change. But if we look at the nighttime footage, so in this nighttime footage, you see that there's like one color that dominates, right? So, you don't want that much variation in your channels. Uh, the daytime footage, you see a lot more variation. So in the daytime footage, there's a lot more color value, but it does kind of get washed out by the infrared lights that I use to illuminate during the night. Um, that's just kind of how it is, and that's why I have my threshold set so low. But you can fiddle around with it, find something that works for your setup, and force capture time it's how often it recaptures the base image to compare against. So right now I have mine set to every 20 minutes. This kind of thing just, it's, it's there to compensate for changing light, uh, lighting situations so that your camera isn't set off by the sunrise or the sunset. If anyone is interested, I can do a full walkthrough of this, but right now I just want to go over what variables can be changed for your situation. These camera settings here, this sets an artist tag on the video files. This sets the frame rate. I have it set to 15 because 15 captures enough detail without making massive files. And then this is the rotation. You can see here in the comments, I've described what it's used for. And the rotation you can change depending on how you set the camera up. So you can see here, set rotation to 270 if the switch is on top of the unit, 90 if on the bottom. Depending on how you set your camera up, you're going to want different rotations. I just wanted to make it really easy to set up. <clears throat> if you don't want it to do the capture a new test image every 20 minutes, you can change this to false. And if you want it to capture pictures instead of video, 
change this to false and it'll capture 10 images uh, spaced out by a quarter second. And uh, yeah, so like I said, oh, you know what, I'm not done. I keep thinking I'm done when I'm not. So when I have it start up, doo -doo -doo, this is an export of the cron tab for root on the camera pie. You can see at reboot, I have it do a startup.sh every 15 minutes, a Wi-Fi check, and then um, you know you can fiddle with these values. I just have it do a reboot uh, just to keep it in working order. This is the Wi-Fi check. It just checks to see if it can find my router. If it doesn't, it shuts down the Wi-Fi and brings it back up. And then for startup, you can see here I have it navigate to the folder where my script is, I have it run a simple HTTP server on port 8000. You'll see in a moment why I do that. And then I have it run the um, motion camera script. Now I do no hub and I have this little at symbol so that no hub and the at symbol when used to run something, it disowns it. And then any output gets put into a no hub.out file. So that way the script and the Raspberry Pi, they don't think that it has to be, have someone logged in to run it. On another Raspberry Pi that is running BitTorrent Sync, I have it running this beautiful soup scrubber. I called it that because it's running beautiful soup, but it just goes to the URL of the, um, of the simple HTTP server, and then it downloads everything that the server puts out there. And that simple HTTP server, if you run it without an index.html, it just creates a directory listing of everything. Um, so, check the description below for download links and a full write-up of this project, um, you know, for how it works in depth. And if you want me to do an in-depth look at how everything works, please let me know. Here comes the shameless plugs. Uh, remember to subscribe, remember to like. If you hated this video, remember to dislike. And if you see anything for improvement or you just want to talk to me about decisions that I've made in the programming, make a comment. Please comment. Uh, I love interacting with uh, people on YouTube, even the jerks. I don't know. So. Comment down below, links in the description. Uh, information on the music used in this episode is also in the description. So, with that at an end, over and out, watch six. Peace.